All right. Mm. Good day, everyone. Welcome to MD Sciences. This is a hub of science knowledge. Um, I've received some complaints from students that will teach. A lot of them have been saying that I have not told them my name. All right. My name is Izichiku Daniel. I'm a nursing student. I'm still a nursing student. So uh, I saw how many students struggle in courses like this and they bring a lot of complaints. It was what motivated me to teach online. Even when I don't have classes, I can refer them to, to my videos. When they watch it, they learn. And through the knowledge we deliver them, they can at most pass as the exams. So, what we have today is a parasite known as schistosoma, schistosoma, schistosoma species. Schistosoma species is one of the most, one of the parasites that students tend to be very difficult. But it's simple. Just listen as we study together. It's so, alright. Schistosoma species, the family is Schistosomatia, Schistosomatia, that is the family. And under this Schistosoma, we have many genus. We have Schistosoma hematobium, Schistosoma intercalatum, Schistosoma japonica, Schistosoma masoni, Schistosoma mekongi, Schistosoma mekongi. And the disease state of this schistosoma is schistosomiasis. Schistosomiasis. So take note. You might be asked in the exam which parasite causes schistosomiasis. No, it is schistosoma. Schistosoma. Now let's look at the life cycle. Let's look at the life cycle of this species. Now you know that the, the, there are two hosts here. We have the, the intermediate host and the definitive host, which is human host. Now one thing you must know in studying the life cycle of schistosoma is that the infestive stage is the infestive cicaria. Cicaria, cicaria is the infestive stage. Example question, dash, or what is the infestive stage of schistosoma? No, it is cicaria, cicaria. Now, how does this life cycle come about? Now, when a human host you know, comes in contact with water, let me say a pool or a river that is contaminated with this infestive cicaria. When a human host comes in contact with this cicaria, this cicaria penetrates the skin, skin penetration, the skin of the human host. They shave their, ta their tails, shave some of their body parts, and gain penetration to the human host. And when they gain penetration to the human host, they grow into what we call schistosomes. Schistosomes. Take note. They grow into what we call schistosomes and migrate to the subcutaneous tissues. They migrate to the subcutaneous tissues where they also go to the blood vessels. To the blood, to the blood vessels. Now from the blood vessels, they circulate to the heart and from the heart, they join the pulmonary circulation and circulate, getting to the what? To the liver, where they reach their adult stage. Then they reach their adult stage. They mature and reach the adult stage in the liver. Now from the liver, they circulate to the veins of bladder and the veins of the intestine. 
Now, there are species or there are genuses, genus under this species that move to the bladder, and there are the ones that move to the intestine. Now, the ones that move to the bladder are schistosoma hematobium. Schistosoma hematobium. They are moved to the veins of the bladder. While schistosoma intercalatum, schistosoma deponica, schistosoma masoni, schistosoma recongi move to the veins of the intestine. And here, in the veins of the bladder and the intestine, these schistosoma, they are mature, they lay eggs there, they reproduce and lay eggs and lay eggs. So after laying eggs, doing doing um, after laying eggs, schistosoma hematobi, they are passed out through urine. Take note, schistosoma hematobi are passed out through urine, the eggs, the eggs are passed out through urine. Why the remaining four species, the Masoni, the Kongi, Takalatu, and the Ponica, they are passed out through feces. Through feces. Through feces. And this urine and feces contains eggs. It contains what? Eggs. So, so when this feces and, and urine that are passed out that contain the eggs, eggs of this schistosoma, when they are passed out, those eggs in the urine, the in, in, in a good lighted environment and in a certain temperature, in a certain temperature, they, they break out. They break out. They break out, yes. They break out and develop into what we call myrasidia. 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 They develop into what we call myrasidia. Now, as they develop into what we call marasidia, this marasidia looks and searches for the intermediate snail host, the intermediate molluscan host, which is snail. And once they come in contact with the snail, this marasidia undergoes sporogony and produce spores sporocytes in the snail, which later develop into this into into cicaria. This my cicaria. This my marasidia develop after undergoing after producing sporocysts. They develop into this. They develop back into this cicaria, and the life cycle continues. Note that this, the, this marasidia must find an intermediate host under 32 hours. Under 32 hours. If it doesn't find it under 32 hours, it dies under 32 hours. Now, this infestive cicaria still infected in water. Still, um, like when it's in water, now it still looks for a human host that it will penetrate under 48 hours, under 48 hours. It still looks for a human host that it will penetrate and the cycle continues. So I hope you understand this clearly. So we we'll look at the pathology, the pathology, the pathology. All right, talking on the pathology, like I said, the earliest, um, where we can say that one is infected with schistosoma is what we call human heat, intense irritation, or yes, intense irritation or skin rashes. That is the earliest symptom that we can use to identify this condition known as human heat. So no one comes in. In contact with this cicaria, most villages and local streams, ponds, you know, 
legs when people go to swim all of a sudden you notice scratch all over the body known as swimmer itch now the second disease condition here is hematuria hematuria okay this is the presence of blood in your rain now when i was explaining the life cycle of parasites i told us that schistosomal hematobium invade the veins of the bladder now the calcified eggs bring about rupture and damage to the bladder thereby while passing urine you can see the presence of blood in the urine now take note i can ask you as an exam question each of these species of schistosoma bring about hematuria know that is schistosoma hematobium schistosoma hematobium blood schistosoma hematobium or schistosoma or hematuria is is the presence of that you know that it is the presence of blood in the body now we thought this is the enlargement of the liver with fibrosis now this is the case of where there is intense infection when there is big inf infection in this schistosoma in this condition known as the liver is enlargement of liver with fibrosis or another disease condition portal hypertension portal hypertension the prevention and control of schistosoma the prevention and control of schistosoma almost avoid contact with water that contains with water that contains sicaria with water that contains sicaria number two is to avoid contaminating urine urine and feces urine and feces human urine and feces with water with water another one is the treatment treatment of water with chlorine treatment of water with chlorine that might tend to kill the ants and destabilize them you know an um, infection or penetration to the human host must occur within 48 hours it must occur within 48 hours so when water drinking water or water is treated with chlorine it brings about it kind of stops the sicaria from penetrating the human host another way we can prevent and control the spread of this species and uh, this parasite is to kill and to destroy the intermediate of the snail host the snail host because it is in the snail host that the sicaria is gotten the sicaria when the eggs in my in my residia invade the, the snail the sicaria is gotten from the snail host so when this when the when the snail host is, is destroyed and is killed, it can it can control the spread of these diseases. Now we can control this and kill this by molluxites, molluxites, or we use natural hosts like birds and dogs or to destroy them. Now the diagnosis and treatment of schistosoma. Diagnosis is how can we detect the presence of schistosoma species or how can we detect it? Yeah. So the first way is the presence of eggs in urine. Presence of eggs in urine and feces. Now when we take stool samples or also urine samples and take it to the lab, to the men lab scientists and they investigate and run test to see whether they can find the presence the, the eggs in the eggs of schistosoma now in cases in rare cases whereby the presence of eggs cannot be detected in the urine and feces we use what we call rectal biopsy or bladder mucosal biopsy so take note rectal biopsy or bladder mucosal biopsy to see the presence of these eggs these eggs now the drug of choice the drug of choice is mectizan the drug of choice 
is in advertising. So take note, baptism is a drug that can be used in the treatment of schistosoma species. So we'll still talk on the epidemiology. The epidemiology. Now I'm talking on the epidemiology, you see that the availability of natural hosts like water bodies uh, foster the spread of these diseases. The spread of these diseases and also the availability of the intermediate intermediate host, the snail, they also foster the spread of these diseases. Then human activities. One activities aid the host, the host, the first, uh, the host, the host relationship. Yes, the host and infection relationship. So that is the epidemiology. So I think that is all we need to know. Yeah, I don't think there is anything I'm missing. So. Thank you so much for watching. I'd like you to like, share our videos, share our videos, subscribe, most importantly, subscribe, refer us to your friends in other universities that offer these courses. And as you do that, God will give you good success in your exams. In Jesus' name, Amen.